Hello and welcome everyone. It is noon, so we are going to get started. Um, I'm Kelly. I'm with SCORE. I am a mentor, so we are thrilled to have Barbara Shuck here with us doing our session today. Uh, but I do want to mention a couple of things. One, check your emails because you should have gotten the slides and the worksheet that Barb's going to um, go over with you. So you, that should be in your email. And it would have come from Kelly Miller at SCORE volunteers. So check that out. Check your spam folders too. Um, also, if you have a question, anytime you have a question, please ask it in the chat. You can find the chat box by kind of moving your mouse over the screen. You'll see a green share screen button and to the left is your chat box. So you click on that and you can either chat with everybody and just ask a question, which I recommend you ask the question to everybody. And then um, Barb will answer it throughout the session. If you have any other questions or whatever, you can send it to me, the chapter admin 40 the host, and um, I can answer that for you. So we will get started. Barb? Awesome. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, come on. There we go. And if you'd like to put your camera on, it's always nice to have some faces there. If that doesn't work for you, then that's that's fine as well. So I do want to remind you all to please um, please use the chat so that I can, uh, it just adds a little bit of, um, uh, Kelly, they, my chat disappeared as a presenter. Uh, I can watch it if you want and- Nope, I got it, sorry. Okay, good. Um, I'm gonna turn off my, pictures of people. So uh, it, if you'd like to have your camera on, it's always kind of nice. If not, then um, that's fine as well. So do use your chat so that, um, in, unfortunately, we can't all be together. So I like to talk with people rather than at them. And so when I have the chat box, it kind of makes me feel like I've got a withing, uh, with kind of conversation going on. So um, we're going to talk about guerrilla marketing today. And in order that I can make sure that we're staying on track with the kinds of businesses that you all have, can you give me an idea of what your business is and um, you know, the specific product or services? And, um, and then I always kind of look at it from the angle of, is it a service or B2B business to business or business to customer, a, a retail type of a situation? So. Um, just like to see what kinds of businesses that everybody's in and then we can this this session today I want to do some real brainstorming however we can through through the chat because um, I think that you know we're all better together so I want to be able to share some ideas so some of you I've met before um, Barb the nonprofit education um, Cindy I know I've we've talked to before stealth broadband fiber internet service okay tutoring amazing Management consulting, Vaughn, I think we've met before. So coaching, health coaching, great. Event management, yep. So um, a good combination of both B2C and B2B. So I think that's really good. Um, blogging and teaching, great. So let's, let's jump in. And like I said, if you have a question or want to make a comment, please use the chat and then I'll, I'll keep an eye on it so that I can respond. So let's talk about guerrilla marketing. Um, the reason why I'm here today is because I'm a, a marketing consultant and I've been in marketing and sales um, for over 35 years, which is interesting because I've seen all kinds of changes and technology and the business that I was in originally printing business is almost, gosh, it's practically, it's just, it's just has changed completely. It's almost out of business because, with desktop publishing and laptop computers and everything from my experience. I'm also a small business owner um, with the printing company and as a consultant. And so um, I hopefully with the insights that I like to share, I would, I'm doing myself or not doing them as well as I would like. And so I'm, I'm coming along right alongside all of us today in these conversations because um, it's kind of proven ideas as well as questions that I might have to you. And uh, like I said, we can all learn from each other. So 
our plan for today is really let's talk about what is guerrilla marketing and what are some action plans and then kind of a then what and I want to spend some time at the very end to reflect back on this because I think we're all looking for great ideas and new ideas and so I want to spend some time in a couple of instances where we do use the chat and we share good ideas so let's get started. So in the chat, what does guerrilla marketing mean to you? Um, if we use that term, uh, what, what comes to mind? Um, and while you're talking, it's giving me your answers. I'm just, I had a great SBA um, score workshop a couple of years ago and the topic was guerrilla marketing. And I had a particular perspective of it. And um, I think I wasn't hitting on what people were looking for. And so at the very end of it, the guy, one of the attendees said, but what, what are guerrilla marketing ideas do you have? So this, this is a great topic for me and I wanted to make sure that I'm providing the best insights that I can. So let's start from the beginning. What is the, what do the words mean? So from um, Mike, it's nothing, not, guerrilla marketing is nothing, no specific thing, the gorilla you see in a zoo. Um, it's kind of maybe we don't know what it is and we're really here to hear to think more about it. Vaughn, you've got aggressive. I think that's got a, a lot of great value to it. Sneaking marketing into every aspect of your business. Cindy, that's good. Um, any other grassroots or non-standard channels? Yep, yep. We're, or this is kind of where we want to lean into. Um, any other ideas? So let's, using marketing without much cost, that it can happen that way. I think we'll talk about that and have some ideas. So, well, let's jump into it some more. So I've kind of got two directions that I'm going today. Um, this book is called Marketing Warfare and it was referred to me from a client of mine who is in the construction business. And um, this woman has a very successful business that's undergoing some transition and changing right now. And she was telling me in the first time that we met that she read this book called Marketing Warfare and it opened her eyes and it taught her everything she knew about marketing and she thought it was just amazing. So I bought it and have read it because as a professional marketer, I thought, well, shoot, I've never heard about this. I've heard of Al Rees and Jack Trout before, um, but I, I, I thought this was very interesting and I have a very competitive nature and I look at marketing as really kind of a competition and it is kind of like warfare. We win, um, you know, we, we lose, we, we have all these strategies and tactics. And so there's a lot of warfare kinds of language in as part of marketing. So um, anyway, this is a great book. It is very broad and it's um, not particular to any kind of industry. It is an older book and it talks a lot about some brands that you're all familiar with, um, Ford and Chevrolet and lots of different kinds of companies. Uh, but I think that has some really good insights and I'm gonna share some of them real quick, but um, just, I thought this was a great place to start. So in that book, they're talking about warfare and there's four different pillars of warfare. There's defensive, offensive, flanking, and guerrilla. And what I have in this table here are some highlights and some things that I'd noted in the book that I wanted to save for myself and keep in mind so that I could be thinking about what is defensive, what is offensive, and so far. So when you're defensive, um, this is likely you're the leader in a market, you're the leader, um, you know, in an industry, in a product, and one of the concepts is it's difficult to dethrone a king. Um, they're in a it well entrenched and they're very established. And so one of their strategies is that, and I've got some highlighted boxes here. When you, open, when you own the pie, you should try to enlarge the pie rather than increase the size of your slice. So um, this is how Procter & Gamble works. You know, they have all, they have their Procter & Gamble and then they have all their sub brands. But what they wanna do is make the pie larger. Um, so they wanna promote that industry and potentially, you know, team with other companies or joint venture with other companies or build other brands into your company. With offense, your strategy is um, really focused on the leader in the market who is the opposite of the de defensive warfare. And so your main strategy is how do you decrease their share of the market? So if that's the case, then um, the odds are in favor of the defender 
So whoever is the main company, the market leader, there's always a weakness in that strength. So you need to find what that weakness is and, and leverage it and take advantage of it. So I don't have, the book goes into a lot of examples on these and it's really quite interesting. So part of this is just, I'm, I'm going to get to guerrilla warfare, but what are the other kinds of situations that are out there? And then of course there's flanking. And this is when you come at a different angle to whoever is the number one and the number two, let's say in the market. And that third box down is important. You need an element of newness or exclusivity. So what can you do that's different to what's already existing? Um, and in the bottom price, there are the strategies there. It could be a lower price. It could be a higher price to establish a luxury item or a luxury angle on it. It could be a small size. It could be a large size. I just noticed yesterday there was a um, iPhone commercial and they had two different sizes. I think it's an iPhone 12 and then they have the mini one. And I just thought that was an interesting where, you know, maybe size is important. So maybe you have a smaller, there is a product out there and you have invented a smaller piece of that so that um, it can be just a new offering. So um, for my friend who is the uh, used sporting goods, maybe this is kind of a flanking move that your, your business represents compared to, you know, the Shields and the Dick's sporting goods and all in the main lines is, is that you have a different, you have a different kind of a product that's the same. It's the same, but different. Just different distribution, different product form. That's where the used comes in. Um, fewer calories, that's where, you know, the non-fat or the sugar-free kind of falls into place. So anyway, what you're trying to do is affect the choices that the consumer has to um, come at it from a different angle. So, um, so that's flanking. Then we come to gorilla. And I thought this was so interesting to me um, because, I, you know, I'm, I'm starting to love this whole gorilla marketing theme. Um, but I love at the top and from Mao Zedong, the enemy advances, we retreat, um, the enemy camps, we harass, the enemy tires, we attack, the enemy retreats, we pursue. So you are always doing something around the competition. It's not just promoting your own company. You're always seeing what your competition is doing and then doing something different to shake it up, to get the attention of your audience, just, just to stand out. So Gorilla tries to reduce the size of the battleground to achieve superiority. So here's where a niche comes into play um, or a segmentation in terms of um, what's going on in the market. Um, so for example, I'm a marketing consultant. My niche is architecture, engineering, construction firms. And I, the better I get at being a business owner, the more I understand how to how to leverage that niche position. I don't have to be all things to all people, but to those clients where I want an architect or whatever, I want to do their work. Man, I lean into exactly what is that specialty about myself. And so I'm going to, all of my tactics are going to be more in the gorilla mindset. Pick a segment small enough that you can become the leader. And that's what I'm doing with my business is really focusing on being a consultant that offers a specific service for the clients in this industry so that I become a leader in it. And, you know, we, you can always call me and ask me questions about it, but in the past year or so, I, because I have even niched my consulting business into more communications-based writing and, and those kinds of things, I'm find I'm busier and busier all the time because I have really honed in on what is what I believe is to be one of my clients' largest problems. So therefore, um, I'm able to help them more and help them understand why it's a problem and that it's kind of like only I can help you with this. So that's kind of what my mentality is. Small size equals quick decisions. That's one way of competing against these big monolithic huge companies. Is you have the ability to bend, reflect, uh, reflect, adapt be nimble and make quick decisions that allow you to have that flexibility so that that improves your competitive nature and it improves your, um, your performance because you don't get too far down a path because you're not quite as attached to the outcome and you don't have as much invested in it. So a gorilla reduces the size of the battleground to achieve a superiority of, of force. So I, I think what I learned in a lot of this was, is size doesn't matter. Size is what you want to make it. And then you do your marketing based on that size. And using these four different angles, it gives you different tools in the toolbox. But I think that this whole gorilla mindset is 
quite frankly, just, you know, amazing what we can do with it. So I'm going further in this, um, come on, I want to change my slide. Um, in this principles of warfare, I have this all on a page, but in the slideshow, I'm, I'm making it into four, two, two different pages, but there's three general recommendations for each of these different kinds of principles of warfare. And let's just kind of stay with the gorilla. So again, you want to find a segment of the market small enough to defend. So all of the clients that are interested in services may not be yours, but you have some very specific targets. So this means that the more you market, the more targeted you need to be. And, and Cindy, I see yours, uh, we market this in every post on social media. So thinking about what your channels are, what your messages are, is keep them very targeted and specific so that they appeal to the people who have the interest in exactly where, what your um, slice of the pie is. Um, number two is no matter how successful you become, never act like the leader. So, you know, we all have dreams of, be, of growing our businesses and, and I think that's wonderful. When you are in the gorilla mindset, um, growth and becoming the big guy, it's a long-term dream. And so your current marketing strategies need to be nimble, quick, um, agitating the market, being noticeable and things like that. So you don't wanna do necessarily then what the big guys are doing. You have to remember the, the age of your company, where you're going with it. And you just don't wanna act like a leader because you're not gonna stand out. They are always going to have that defensive kind of marketing and you're not likely to be successful. You have to be on your toes and tripping them up all the time. And then number three is be prepared to bug out at a moment's notice. And I think this isn't necessarily you know, packing it up and, you know, throwing the white flag, I think it is a matter of being flexible, adaptable, and um, keeping an eye on what's going on so that your strategies and your tactics will be uh, fresh, clean, and exciting, and they will stand out, which is what we're all looking for with our marketing anyway. So this is basically the information that I got from that book. And like I said, it's, it's, um, it's a jet, it's a, a book about all different kinds of marketing strategies through the lens of marketing warfare. And I think that the what they're saying is, is that most companies probably need to be doing marketing warfare kinds of activities more than um, the other three kinds, because there's always going to be a leader in the market and there's always going to be the number two. And then there's always going to be people who can, who are coming in with their, they're finding that uncontested area. So the most of us should be looking at marketing strat or guerrilla strategies for our marketing, which I thought was quite interesting. So the second thing that I did um, when I was thinking about guerrilla marketing is to make sure that we're talking about the same thing as I literally Googled it. Um, so guerrilla market, and I learned a lot because it's, it's a, in the vein of what the book was saying, but it's also um, a little bit more marketing focused that we're accustomed to. So guerrilla marketing is an advertising strategy in which a company uses surprise and unconventional interactions. And I think that was very interesting. And it was really just kind of popularized in 1984, which in the big scheme of things, isn't that long ago. So it's surprise, unconventional, creative, standing out. And it's, I thought that was interesting. High energy and imagination. Uh, guerrilla marketing is about taking the consumer by surprise and making an indelible impression and create copious amounts of social buzz. And I, that's where I think social media is very interesting that you can take some events, some things that you're doing and really put it into social media and that has that buzz and the, and the um, viral nature of it that can, can improve your effectiveness for guerrilla marketing strategies. Guerrilla marketing is said to make a far more valuable impression with consumers in comparison to traditional forms this is due to the fact that most guerrilla marketing campaigns aim to strike the consumer at a more personal and memorable level. Um, so this is that surprise factor. This is unconventional. And um, I've got a couple of examples, um, but keep this in mind because we're gonna be brainstorming, continuing to brainstorm on this. So some of the quotes that kind of stood out, it's unauthorized and disruptive. I don't wanna say anything's illegal, but sometimes we do kind of wanna push the envelope on um, Convention, conventionality, um, brand activation that isn't 100% permitted by the city of enter establishment. And again, I'm not ever going to promote anything that's illegal or unethical, um, but it's kind of pushing those, pushing the box outside a little bit. Um, it's a state of mind. It simply isn't guerrilla if it isn't newsworthy. 
And that takes a lot of courage, I would say. And I'm not sure that I would necessarily agree with that, but I think you have to have a state of mind that puts you into a mood or some kind of mindset so that you can think about what could be a guerrilla marketing strategy. So now I've got a couple of examples and I literally Googled, Googled guerrilla marketing and looked at the images. And there are some crazy things out there that are pretty amazing. Um, and they tend to be kind of events and stand out and they may stop traffic or they're kind of, there was one that was a Starbucks cup that had fallen on its side on the, on the sidewalk. And it looked like there was coffee that had spilled and there was the, the stir stick and, and whatnot. So I encourage you to think about that and we'll talk in more depth, but here's an example, the staircase door from Ikea. Um, they wanted to show innovative ways to save space. And so they, they use stairs in their store to show drawers with things in it. And I just thought, well, that is pretty amazing. And um, I thought that was, I just thought, wow, that was, it, it took some forethought to think, how would you actually construct that, design it and everything. But it, in, in my mind, it was like, you can't not look at it. You cannot capture your attention. And for me as a consumer, boy, I think I would just head straight over into that department. And I love on the, on the um, landing, it says create space and organize. And again, we'll talk about simplicity, but I think simplicity of words to go along with the creative images is really important. Another example that I saw was this, um, their I can't read them, but I'm assuming this is for a dental service. And so they've taken a, a telephone pole or electrical pole or something, and they've made this look like um, teeth. And I'm sure that's almost like a business card or an explanation of the services for this, this um, dentist. And you would just tear those sheets off or it looks like they might be sticky. But it is so eye-catching that it is just so engaging. And I think it would be a situation where you just have to pull off one of those things and find out about it. It's memorable and it isn't a high cost thing and it isn't gonna be something that's gonna last forever either, but it, it de definitely has this uh, unanticipated um, creativity. And then one similar to that is for ballet classes, again, um, kind of looking like a tutu and they've got their contact information there. It's not a high cost kind of um, an example, but it really, it would definitely stand out. So there were some other examples in there that um, I wanted to kind of limit this, the size of what these examples were and the applicability to small businesses. And so anyway, I encourage you to, to Google some images on this and see if, see if that does have some, some ideas give you some ideas. So I love this. So what um, concept I ask myself all the time. So what is what does this mean to me? Um, and so one of the things that I learned in the research and kind of the digging in was is that guerrilla marketing just isn't a thing that you do. It isn't a set of things that you do. It isn't one size fits all. What works for one company isn't going to work for another company. And that's because it's guerrilla because it's going to be unique. And so it's kind of like, well, so then what do I do with this? What I know I have to come up with all these ideas myself. It's just for my company. It's kind of what my services are. So, so what do I do? So I, was, I mean, I'm walking aside you guys along this too. And I thought, well, I have to become a gorilla. I have to think about what does a gorilla think? How do they approach a situation? How do they solve problems? How do they get creative? How do they see through all of this stuff so that they know that what they're going to do is going to be effective? And so I kind of thought about it some more and I realized I have to think creatively. I have to think outside the box. I have to think of not just something that's new, but is there something out there that's different? How can I, how can I use my my knowledge about my business, my clients, my services, how do I get outside of my own head and not, and, and challenge myself to think literally outside the box. So I came up with some ideas and did some research on how do you think creatively? And the reason why I wanted to do this is, is that guerrilla marketing, I don't have a specific thing to do or how to do it, but if you learn to think creatively, then you can develop some guerrilla marketing strategies that are going to work for your firm. So 
So the first thing is, is what else can I do with this? So as you have a particular kind of um, a product or a slogan or a piece of communication that you're doing, ask yourself, is there a different thing that you can do with what your product is that creates kind of some new demand for it? Um, so, or how do you, if you're using social media and you've been using it for a long time, is there something different about social media that you could do that would change it up and not be what, what your viewers are seeing on a regular basis? So this is just something that I do and I've done ever since I was ever since I was a little girl, but I love to go through junk mail and I don't read it to know what that person, what that company is saying. What I'm doing is I'm looking at junk mail um, or even just Googling things or just looking at, you know, social media feeds and thinking about not the specific, what are they trying to sell me, but how are they trying to sell me something? Is there something that I can apply in these messages or in this postcard or in this envelope that I'm using or even the envelope itself? Is there something about this that I can apply to my business that is something that I haven't thought about before? So I know that there's, for example, there's a lot of postcards out there. Some of them are really big these days and some of them are really small. Um, they We've just opened up the sizes of postcards for mailers. And I think that's an, an angle of, well, maybe you've been doing it one way. Maybe you could change it up a little bit so that it stands out. So it's your product. It's what else can you do with the activities that you're doing? What else can you do with your product that gives it another kind of a purpose for someone um, that you know is looking for something conventional, but all of a sudden it's they they see a different use for it. I don't have any examples on my mind, but when we think creatively, this will be a great question to ask. The second one is take notice, and that is just being curious. And I know that I tend to I'm moving so fast sometimes, and I'm just not really paying attention to try to see things through a different set of eyes. Um, but if I don't slow down and I don't start to notice what I'm noticing, then I'm not going to be able to come up with new ideas. And, and one of the quotes that I really like about this is the concept of, you know, we talk about be nosy about something. Well, be easy about things. Notice things. Look at things. Look at, um, look at uh, billboards or look at signage. Look at vehicles and, that have those wraps around them. They're, what can you notice that would be something that you don't have to take the whole thing, but is there a piece of something that you could use to apply to your business? I think social media gives us a great opportunity here. What are some other brands doing, not even in your, in your market, target market, but what are some other brands doing that you could notice and think that's, that would be something that I could do that would stand out and um, be just be kind of that unconventional component. So I think that's a really good idea. It's always, it's for me, it's hard to keep it simple, but the more I focus on simplicity, fewer words, stronger words, um, clarity, uh, not trying to do too much with everything, the more my message will get through. So there's a story about how Ernest Hemingway wanted to challenge himself to write a story in six words. And I thought, I don't know what the story was, but that is the concept of how do we take everything that we know about our products and our services and just keep distilling it down into some really extremely simple phrases that we can build some advertising or some communication social media campaigns on? And really, that's what Twitter has done is, is Twitter has taken all kinds of marketing communications and just said, you only have so many characters for this. So let's keep it simple, let's keep it straightforward. And so now I think we're all getting used to platforms where simplicity is good. Social media, the best social media's plat, uh, messages are going to be short and sweet and have great visuals, graphics, videos, and things like that. So that is telling me that keeping it simple is an extremely strong strategy and it's not easy, um, but use, keep honing your messages, keep simplifying it, use simple words, Keep cutting out extraneous details, focus on one thing at a time, and then you will, you will stand out and um, it will get people's attention because there's so much noise going on that they can't see it. They can't see very much. 
Another creative mindset or a way to think outside the box is to embrace absurdity. And I think this is kind of hard for me because I'm, I'm not a very funny person and humor just doesn't really, I just don't enjoy humor a lot. So absurdity is difficult for me um, because it's, it can feel funny and awkward all at the same time. But is there something that is a bit absurd that you could use as a theme for an advertising campaign or signage or some in in retail shop in shop kinds of things or on in social media that generates you know some interest so is there another way to use your product that makes it stand out because it's it's unconventional um, thinking about uh, I don't have any examples off the top of my head but for me absurdity is um, really the it's interesting to me that the fewer words I use going back to that simplicity and maybe it's kind of using some words that people don't expect to see um, from marketing for engineering and construction in fact um, I think I talk about bombs on my website and I have these little bombs and and it's kind of to show you're you're busting you, you know you're blowing up old ideas and so that is kind of an absurdity that I hadn't really thought about but it's it's a little bit unconventional in in my very um, traditional standard uh, bureaucratic kind of industry. So I've got little bombs on my, on my, for bullets on my website. So that's kind of an example. Um, swap systems, is there a plan B? Um, are there things that you're doing that you can do plug and play? They, one of these examples is take the quick change systems of theater scenery and apply them to rethink your spaces. And, and so think about plays and how they build these sets that can be switched out, turned around, lighted differently. Um, are there things that you can swap in your communications, in your marketing that gives it a fresh life? Um, I can't say as I have any examples off the top of my head, but um, maybe if you're accustomed to one platform in social media, maybe you can start to investigate another channel and say, well, I need to, I need to swap out some, I need to create an appeal to some different markets, audiences using a different social media platform. And so that's, that is kind of a swap. And so you can't necessarily, you don't necessarily want to have the same tone and voice to your, um, your messaging for your brand. You may want to have a little casual one, let's say if you're using Facebook or if you want to have a professional angle, you want to use different words, different images and things like that. If you're going to be on LinkedIn or if you're using Instagram, you may want to have more people focused on it. And again, it's a highly visual platform. So it's just a matter of ex ex exchanging words for images, video for um, you know, blocks of text. It, just think about how can you swap out what you're doing so that it gives you plug and play and it, it starts to give you a little bit more flexibility with what your marketing is. Not the greatest picture, but there is this concept of repositioning. And um, this is when you make the unremarkable remarkable. How do you, it's kind of like swapping, but how do you, where can you reposition your product in a market that that isn't where it has been expected to be in the, in, um, in, in previous years or whatever. So um, an example of that is um, I'm this kind of applicable to it. So I'm a consultant for lots of firms. I also do a good amount of teaching and instruction. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking at 2021, I am taking some of the speaking pieces that I have done for for um, organizations or conferences and things like that. And I'm repositioning them as a training series that I can offer to, um, to companies on communication. So rather than thinking about, well, I'll just do one workshop for them. I'll say, I've got a series of workshops that can be delivered over months or weeks or something like that. And so therefore it, it generates more revenue for me because I'm taking something that I've already done, but I'm packaging it differently so that it has a new purpose for a little bit different of a clientele so that it, it provides new revenue income for me. And it's also repeatable so that I'm not recreating the wheel every time I can tailor it 
but I'm also building on this, this basis of um, thought leadership that I've developed and I'm, I'm just taking some, some services that I have packaged, but I'm repositioning them in the marketplace and I'm restructuring it, repackaging it, reselling it um, to create essentially a new line of services for myself that I can then offer to lots of different people in lots of different venues. And um, it's not a huge investment for me. It's just, it's changing how I'm looking at what it is that I'm doing so that it can be more, more effective and generate more income and more revenue. So another one is try translating. And this is an interesting concept um, where it's a creative thought of, is there something about your business that you can translate a particular concept graphically or um, visually or um, with photographs? So if you've got on your website, let's say you've got some explanations of some of the products and services you have, can you use different uh, can you use infographics? Can you use icons instead of words? Can you use um, fresh photography with your products so that you're showing, um, you're, you're translating how your product is used in a different way? So if you describe your product, maybe you use video or you have photos of your product in use so that it, it appeals to people differently and it might open other people's minds about how they can use your product so that it's more, uh, it, it's more useful to them. Just an idea. So improvisation is is just totally creative thinking. And um, two, two aspects on this slide is, is that if you ever have a chance, I haven't done it myself, but if you ever have the chance to take an improv class or go to an improv or kind of experience the, in, um, the kind of improv where you participate, improvisation is a great way to really get your mind out of, out of the traditional uh, ruts that we fall in. And one improvisation exercise is this yes and. Notice for yourself how many times someone will give you an idea and you say yes, but. And when you say but, you've negated any kind of opportunity to think outside the box, to be creative and to really expand your approach to something. And so if you can learn to say yes and, then it becomes an additive process you learn to think beyond the negative things that you can't do, and you start changing your brain to think about the things that you can do that can be very effective. I know for myself, I have the letters A and D um, on a bookshelf in my office to remind myself not to get into the yes, but, and to be open-minded to lots of new ideas that may be coming in. So allow yourself to think about, well, here's a challenge and yes, and, and what could I do? And it, it becomes a conversation that you have with other people as well, so that you can lean into opportunities rather than these barriers. And it allows you to, to think creatively. Finally, understand your process. Um, you know, it looks here about understand what your business is and, and how it works. Um, figure out when are you creative? Um, when are you open to thinking about what you're doing with your business? Um, when you're not tired, you're not hungry, you're not overwhelmed. Uh, for me, I know my best times are in the morning. Um, I think probably coffee helps with that. Some of my best ideas literally come at me in the shower because I've been processing while I've been sleeping or something has been in my mind for a while. And somehow or another with, with fresh water and I'm doing something else, it opens my brain up to have a, a new fresh idea. It happens a lot of times in the car as well. I know there's a scientific neuroscience reason for it, but when we take our minds off of trying to solve a specific problem in a particular way, then we, and, and allow our minds to be creative and think out, think not of that problem, then we'll understand, um, we'll have some aha moments and we'll be able to solve the problem. So what is your process for problem solving is it the time of day? Is it um, writing things down? Is it creating spreadsheets? Is it making lists of things to do? Um, is it using a whiteboard or a blank sheet of paper so that you can start to think outside the box? So understand what is it gonna take for you to have some creative, some creative thoughts to get you out of the rut so that you can have these guerrilla ideas that could be really quite helpful. And actually this is the last one, make it personal. Um, Use your own experiences and your own thoughts and your own opinions to drive your company 
as well as be listening to other people for what they may be able to provide to you as well. Um, you, you know, that's where, I mean, just today, I don't have all the answers on guerrilla marketing, but as I'm digging into this to help communicate some ideas for you, when I'm applying it verbally to examples for my business, I realize that I'm able to come up with some ideas that I wouldn't have otherwise thought of simply because it helps you understand some ideas because I'm digging into my own weaknesses and things like that. So the more you can make it personal, the more you can think about leaning into your family, leaning into having them help you. I know that we live and breathe our companies, but if this were really something that I was looking for, that I really wanted to buy this, what else could I do? How else could I make this be more successful? So just, you know, take a deep breath and keep digging in and find out how it, how you might be successful. So once you have some creative thoughts, creative moments, general ideas, and that's what this last section has been, then here are some ways that we might be able to develop some tactics that, you know, based on all of these creative thoughts. So you can brainstorm new product development with your team or your family spouse, or even, I mean, I do a lot of brainstorming on a whiteboard in my office, just throw out ideas. Um, invite a customer or a prospect to discuss new ideas. Lean into your clients. Um, get to know them and say, hey, do you have 15 minutes? Maybe it's a phone call, um, virtual meeting, but ask them some questions to find out if they've got some ideas of what works and what doesn't. Um, discuss new marketing ideas with a strat business, strategic business partner. It may not be someone in your business. It could be someone at SCORE. It could be a good friend. Um, I kind of have my my board of advisors who I often just give them a call and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing something. What do you think about this? And they know my business. They know the industry that I'm in. So I lean into them as just advisors. Um, brainstorm ideas for enter to win. If you have a contest, what else can you do? And again, just learn how to think outside the box and find better ways to brainstorm. Um, plan a new customer service activity. Um, just think ahead in terms of holidays, what maybe not the holiday, maybe sometime in January or February when everybody's done from that, you could do something that truly delights your customers and it's at a different time of the year than normal and so that you don't just fall into the, the noise of the holidays. Um, ask your customers what you do best and what you could do better um, so that, and feedback is a gift. So listen intently and, and keep digging in and have them help you. And here's where you can use the yes and, and you could be talking to them and they could be telling you something and your, your inclination is to defend yourself. But if you could lean in and say yes and, and they'll start adding more value to that conversation. And so you'll, you'll get even better information. Um, then hold a customer appreciation party. These are just some ideas, but you could, again, not necessarily during the holidays, but maybe there's um, other times of the year that could be really fun. I know a lot of companies do like Christmas in July or they have golf tournaments in the spring or whatever and whatever our world has in store for us with COVID and, and virtual meetings and things like that. But how can you appreciate your customers and, and help them understand some of your strategies and then maybe ask them, as a little part of attending this appreciation party, maybe you can put like a, a whiteboard on the wall and say, what more or what else? And they could brainstorm some ideas on that wall and you could get, get some of that ideas from them at that event. People love to give their opinions. Again, develop an advisory group. Uh, it doesn't have to be a paid kind of position, but lean into folks and, who aren't in your business, who have a different kind of business and what can they advise you on? and then brainstorm advertising concepts. All of this is thinking outside the box. How can you expand what you're currently doing so that you, it doesn't become the same old, same old, and because it's different, it stands out, it's unconventional, it, it will tend to be a gorilla kind of a, a marketing strategy. Um, so you, I, I sent you this, or you've got this worksheet, and I'm kind of a dork for doing this kind of stuff, but Think these are some great strategies to build your creativity that will help you create some marketing strategies that are outside the box. So I just made this into a little worksheet and I encourage you to think about this. And 
I'm also saying be playful, use crayons instead of a pen or pencil. Literally the smell of crayons increases your creativity. I know that for me, when I wanna be creative and I've got to, you know, I want something new and different, I will literally get out my crayons. I have some crayons in my office, in my desk, and I'll, let it, I'll put them on the table and I'll sniff the crayons. It's not illegal and it's not unhealthy, but it's like when you're a kid again and you have that fresh new box of crayons the first part of school is like, oh, it just, it generates all kinds of um, new ideas and fresh ideas. I think that's one thing about those um, smelly, uh, the fruity uh, highlighters and things like that. Your senses are come alive in lots of different ways. They can really spur your creativity to be more successful, but take all these ideas and start brainstorming through them again. What else can you do? What can you take notice of? And then if you write these things down and you are mindful and thoughtful and deliberate about it, then you're a lot more likely to come up with some ideas that you wouldn't have otherwise come up with. So, so I've got some time here. Um, let me know, let's talk in the, in the chat box. We've got some comments in here. Um, what would, how might you apply some of these things to your business? How can you, what are some ideas that you would like to get to think, could this be gorilla? Here's an idea I'm having. We can use this group to get to gather some ideas and get some feedback. And I promise we have to be yes and, no buts here. And how can we help each other out with some gorilla marketing tactics that are unconventional, that are not necessarily difficult to put into place, that catches people's eyes? How can we help each other get some of these ideas for our businesses today? So, Start commenting in the chat box. Give me some, give me some thoughts here on, on what might work for your business or something maybe you've been thinking about and you can kind of test it with us. We can be an advisory group and, and see, um, you can tap into the knowledge that's here on the call for a couple of minutes. And then also at this time, if you want, just ask some questions. What, what else about this? Um, so from Cindy, we just started doing a post or two a week on social media with our employees' dogs in our store and certain piece of equipment we are trying to sell. People love dogs. That is great. People love dogs and, um, you know, dogs and babies. Maybe there's a way you could use little toddlers with your equipment. For example, last night I'm, I'm visiting my family in Arizona and um, my grandson had some old golf clubs in their little kid size. And so he's given them to his cousin and these little girls are, have got these golf clubs, but it's hilarious to watch them trying to play golf with their kid size golf clubs. But that could be a fun social media campaign or, you know, using having kids in football equipment or running shoes or skis or things like that. I mean, you know, that's, that's a great idea. I think that's a, a fun, um, engaging, post and um, helps people, it just gives people a smile. And, and we want to create smiles around our business so that they look like they're inviting places to be and people can enjoy um, using your products or using your services. Great idea. So what else? I'm going to, I'll kind of scroll through the chat a little bit. Um, going back to your businesses. So we do have management consulting, tutoring, coaching. Um, you know, when, when we are our own service, what are, what are some things that you could do that's kind of guerrilla marketing? I mean, girl, you're all about guerrilla marketing because there's nobody else like you, but maybe it's even having you do some photos of yourself in different places. Maybe they're outside places instead of in an office. Maybe, um, you know, maybe that's um, kind of showing some uh, not closed office kinds of settings. Maybe you can put yourself in some outdoor spots to um, just different settings for your services while you're talking to people. It could be that even um, having some meetings with people that are have masks on would be appropriate so that you're showing that you're still able to work with other people and yet you're not tone deaf to what's going on. And so you're adaptable, you're flexible and you're, you're still leaning in. Um, 
Here's when we have more pictures to a blog post instead of just words. Yep. Yeah, people, here's an interesting fat, uh, factoid or tidbit. Um, people don't like to read. So they like to see things and they remember things that they see more than what they read. So that's where a few words and a great image is going to be um, ever so much more memorable. And good marketing is an exercise in, in repetition and memorability. So maybe there is a really strong photo and there's one or two words that you could add to it and not have to do a lot of writing. So um, here's a question, is this recorded to watch again? Yes, I believe that we are recording it. Kelly, you can chime in on that. Um, we'll work on climate change issues. I was thinking about bringing in the book the Lorax by Dr. Seuss may have to ask for permission. Yeah, we do want to make sure that you could do all these, but absolutely. Or you could even just say, this is a, uh, this is a great book and, and it, um, that means a lot to you and your business. You know, you can connect the dots like that. Um, absolutely. Yes, it is being recorded and posted on YouTube and she'll get the link and share it with us. So, um, yeah, so what is, and, and guerrilla marketing, some of the examples that we showed at the beginning are kind of big, but it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't, it just has to be different. It has to stand out because it is abrasive, not abrasive, but it is unique. It is, it is literally standing out from the, the rest so that you get some space and you break through that noise so that it's um, definitely um, memorable. So I'm gonna continue with this. Um, and again, if, if there's any questions, um, I'll take a couple of them if we have them. If not, then I'll tell you what, I'm gonna run through the end of the slides about SCORE and um, think about your questions and then we'll wrap it up if there's any at the very end. So let's see if there's any other questions. Shoot, I should have moved this to the back. I'm gonna come back to this one, but let me come back to, this is about SCORE and SCORE is an amazing organization. Kelly is a SCORE um, mentor and there are people at SCORE who are available to help you think through and brainstorm these people who are experienced at running their businesses and they're a wonderful source of knowledge and expertise. Whether you're early in your company or a startup business, maybe your company's just an idea still or a startup business or you're an established business, there's all kinds of resources that are available for you. Um, it's free, it's personalized, it's confidential and um, it's, you know, the highest level of ethics and great advice that you can really get for your business. I'm not even reading the slides. So here's the phone number for um, SCORE in Omaha, 402-221-3606 at omahascore.org. Um, so there are some um, great resources here. And I'm going to go back a couple of slides. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back to this last slide. And I kind of want to end here. Um, let's look at the last of this. Here's from Dana. We partnered with the State Chamber of Commerce. They distribute a newsletter with content we write about politics, policies. We've been started incorporating short video interviews using Zoom recordings to showcase our access to elected officials, depth on policy, in-house expertise, and how we're helping clients. Absolutely. I think right now we do have, um, because of Zoom and that's recording abilities, we have a lot of ways of creating content that we might not have otherwise had. And we don't, it doesn't have to be, you know, Hollywood studio produced. Um, actually, I'm not sure what the percentage is, but um, videos on YouTube are all over the board in quality and people search on them because they're, they're wanting the, quant, the quality of information and not necessarily the beauty of it. It has to be done well, but, um, you know, that's a, that's a great idea. So I'm going to finish up with just a couple of questions. What are some things you noticed about today's session and this workshop on guerrilla marketing? Um, what, did, what feelings did you have during the workshop? Um, did it address your thoughts about guerrilla marketing? Did you learn something new? Um, what are some of the benefits? Was there something that you learned or you relearned that you hadn't thought about for a while? What do you think you might be able to do with this information in the future? Um, and what can, what steps can you take to apply what you learned? And I'm just going to say, uh, use that creative worksheet. Use some of those prompts to help you think differently about some of your things. 
spurred a lot of brainstorming, need to get more creative, always look for the opportunity. Remember, be IZ, not just nosy. I thought that was great. Watching this information with several colleagues would be helpful to come up with ideas. Absolutely, some of your advisory team, get some of your friends and people and then allow time at the very end to think, okay, so now what? Um, what, what else can we do? Maybe what you can do would be to have, to watch this and then use this slide right now to spur that kind of conversation. How do you want to do things differently in the future? You could brainstorm some of those ideas. Um, try different things for myself to add pictures to a blog instead of just words, but try different stuff and see what works. That's what good guerrilla marketing is, is that it gives you that flexibility and adaptability to pivot, to change, where if you were the main brand on something, you would spend months and tons of money on the research and maybe never get to the actually trying something new. But as a small business, you have that flexibility and that insight to, to adapt to it. Um, thinking of even the people in the house, they know the business for ideas. Yeah, tap into people, ask, ask those kinds of questions. What am I doing well? What, what, what's one thing I could do differently that you think would help? And um, anyway, those are some ideas. You've got these slides um, in your handout. You've got the um, worksheet. Um, encourage you to uh, try them out and see what works. Um, my I'll put my um, email in the in the message here. I forgot to put it on the last slide, but Barbara at EverestMarketingServices.com. And I have a cell phone. It's a cell phone number. It's not 402-602-686-4616. If you ever want to just chat, I'm glad to help brainstorm anything that I can do. Um, Hopefully you got some new ideas, you got some resources, you can see the recording again, and it's just a privilege to work with um, SCORE and the SBA, and uh, I just hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Barb, so much for doing your session today, and uh, give me a day or two to get the recording up on the YouTube channel, and then it'll be there for you all to watch again. So, everybody have a great day. Thank you. Bye.